Well, howdy there, folks, and welcome into today's video. So today we got to talk about Kathy Wood and ARK Invest and what is going on here, okay? What we're going to share in this video, we're going to talk about where the ARK fund is at. We're going to talk about their biggest positions. We're going to talk about is this fund done going down this ETF or does this still have more you know, room to, to the downside, essentially, which I, I know a lot of you guys are looking at this and it is eerily similar to the dot-com bubble. Like when you compare these charts and thank you to this uh, company that put this this chart together when you put these charts together it is it is uh, creepy it's creepy how exact these charts really go up and move together and things like that and then folks are looking at this and they're like oh my gosh do we really does this ETF really have more downside because keep in mind this this ETF is down like 50 percent plus in the past one year and so it's very rare you see ETFs down 50% plus. Let's just put it that way. And so people are looking at this and like, do these stocks, are they really, is it, are we really on this trend to go down here over this next year, essentially? And uh, I drew a little more for you guys because essentially that last one was taken on the 21st when they had put this together. And, uh, and also a shout out to Vladimir for sending me this. I appreciate you sending me this over. This is good stuff. Um, but, you know, now here on the 29th, Things got worse last week for Kathy Wood in the ETF. So nonetheless, we're about here. So if the chart's right, then we should get a little bounce back here before we get another massive move down, okay? And so let's talk about this in depth, guys. Um, I want to go through these position by position and talk about if these stocks are going to move down more, in my opinion, or if uh, you know, they're kind of done going down and those sorts of things. So I hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Subscribe to this channel. And uh, also, shout out to Moo Moo for sponsoring today's video. We appreciate you guys. As always, I'll tell you a little bit about Moo Moo a little later in this video, okay? So first thing I want to start out is looking at kathywoodstocks.com, which tracks the tw top 25 positions for Kathy Wood on a daily basis and, uh, you know, the weight of those positions. And basically, if she sold shares, obviously, uh, you know, it's going to be less of a weight over time and things like that. And the, obviously, the stock price is going to affect that as well, right? And so if we look at the the, the positions, I mean, you know, it's pretty obvious almost every single one of these stocks is, is probably at a 52 week low or pretty dang close to nonetheless, okay? Almost every single one of these, like you just look at it and like if you track the stock market at all or track some of these stocks, like you know, like pretty much all these are right around 52 week low. And so you can understand why the Kathy Wood ARK ETF has been just absolutely devastated. And meanwhile, you have SARC, which is essentially the shorting of Kathy Wood stocks, just go insane like absolutely insane uh, recently with how much money has come into the sark fund which is essentially an inverse of the arc etf so shorting okay so first off here where i want to start out this video is i really want to focus on the top five positions that Kathy Wood holds here, okay? Because those are the ones that are driving the account more than anything. And then we're going to go through 6 through 20. On a, uh, I want to go a little more in depth on these these ones. And then we'll go just kind of talk about these from a, from a, a higher level perspective, okay? But these ones is where I really want to focus my attention. Tesla, Zoom, Teladoc, Roku, and Coinbase. These all represent at least 5% weight of her positions, essentially. So 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 plus 6 is 17. 17 plus 6 is 23. 23 plus eight we're at uh you know 31 maybe 32 percent of the weight uh if not a little over 32 percent of the weight is in these five positions so these are the five positions that are really running the, the etf essentially okay so let's break down those five to start here coinbase coming in at number five we got really good news for Coinbase and some really bad news, okay? The really good news is, one, the stock's already been devastated. It traded at its 52-week low literally on Friday. The PE is very low on Coinbase. And this is a worldwide known company now that, honestly, at this point in time, you know, if in, in the crypto space, they're massive. And if you're going to think about crypto investing or crypto trading, you're going to consider Coinbase or Coinbase Pro. There's just no doubt about that. You're going to consider it. Maybe you go with a Voyager for crypto or somebody else. But to be honest, like Coinbase is going to be usually the number one top of mind for most folks to consider if they're doing something crypto related, right? You want to buy Bitcoin or something like that. And so that's the really good news. Very low PE, right around 52 week low. And it's number one top of mind when it comes to crypto right? The very, very bad thing involves, by the way, getting into NFTs and a lot of other things for So don't just think Coinbase is only, you know, buying of, of cryptos or something like that. But when it comes to Coinbase, here's the thing. If we go through a multi-year bear cycle for crypto, Coinbase is, is almost guaranteed to go down more. It almost doesn't matter 
regardless, if, if, if we go through a cycle where Bitcoin, Ethereum, everything goes down for two, three years, Coinbase is going to be just a stock that gets kind of devastated during that time and could even fall under $100 a share. Now, that's a big if, and I can't, I'm not going to pretend like I can predict where Bitcoin's price is going over the next two years, okay? I have no clue. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin in two years from now is 100,000 plus. I wouldn't be surprised if Bitcoin's 10,000 at you know this time two years from now. And it could be anywhere in between there, maybe more, maybe less. I'm not going to pretend like I'm going to predict that, but I will say... Coinbase is in a pretty darn good spot. It's just the, the, the one big risk is a multi-year bear cycle. Also, do remember with Coinbase, they're going to always, always, and this goes for Voyager as well, Voyager Digital Stock or any of the other crypto companies out there, they're always going to essentially trade maybe a little cheap. And here's the reason, guys. This is very important. There's always going to be that fear of, oh, Bitcoin's doing great now but it might fall next year. And so you're always going to have that that negativity cycle around this. You know, these stocks almost remind me of MU stock, if you don't know MU, MU's uh, Micron, which they make uh, memory chips and things like that. They're huge in the the memory space, DRAM uh, and NAND. Huge player in that. The, The problem with Micron is they can be making a ton of money, money hand over fist, but essentially what ends up happening is everybody starts saying, well, memory prices are great right now, but just wait till next year. They're probably going to start slowing down. They maybe start going down. Micron can start losing money or their profitability is going to be eroded. And I see that being the same exact thing with Coinbase, where even in a cycle where Bitcoin's doing great, people are going to say, well, yeah, Bitcoin's doing great right now. It's moving up right now, but wait till the next down cycle. Because you always hear people talk about the crypto winter and all those sorts of things. So th- there's good and bad of a Coinbase, but I will say, of her stocks, believe it or not, this is actually one of the safer ones uh, she probably holds in our portfolios, okay? Roku, Roku, this is our fourth biggest position. So Roku, right around another 52-week low, high for the stocks, almost $500. I've never liked Roku, never, okay? So I just want to be very upfront about that. I've never seen it with this stock. I've just never seen it. So, you know, maybe I'm missing the boat when it comes to Roku. This just isn't one. Like, I can totally understand her holding Coinbase and wanting to own Coinbase. And almost all her stocks, and I don't want to say all her stocks, but a lot of them that are top five positions, most of these, I'm like, I can see why she wants to own this. But this one, I just don't get it. It's a high PE name. I don't I don't get it. I never have gotten it. It's a $20 billion market cap. I mean, that's one of those I look at and I'm like... I could easily see that one falling more. So, um, you know, but once again, I don't want to be too harsh on that one because that's just one I've never, to be quite honest, I've never gotten it, okay? TDoc, let's talk about Teladoc. So Teladoc's her number three biggest position. So Teladoc literally hit a 52-week low on Friday. Let's keep that in mind, 66.51. This stock is down from $308, $308, guys, okay? When it comes to Teladoc, It has two massive things working against it. One is this company loses money like it's nobody's business. And I've I've fully looked into Teladoc and I can't tell you when Teladoc's ever going to be profitable. I can tell you it's likely not in 22. I would say 99% chance it's not in 22. I would say probably a 90% chance it's not in 23. I would say maybe a 50-50 at best in 24. And I would say maybe things, you know, flip to the other way starting in 2025. Okay, so when you start talking about a company maybe not being profitable till 2024, 2025, maybe 2026, people are going to, in this sort of market, people hate stocks like this right now. And that's how you end up going from $308 down to $66 and it closed at $70, right? That's how you get that type of fall in a stock because people hate unprofitable companies right now and they hate any company. Any company, fund managers and whatnot, they hate any company that has uh, you know, a story like this where it's like, oh yeah, it's a gross story, it's exciting, but who knows when they're going to be profitable. Even uh, Guys, I mean, I own some stocks that are going to be profitable likely in the back half of 22 and moving into 2023, and even those stocks have been devastated. Never mind a company that's talking about maybe profitable in 2024, 2025. So that's the issue with Teladoc. I will tell you this stock is, a, is, a, is more than likely a winner, winner, chicken dinner long term. And this one could have a huge bounce back. You know, it, could it fall more after a bounce back? That's certainly a possibility. But do keep in mind the one-year target on this, this stock is 141 from the analyst. And so whew, this is one of those stocks when it moves. And if these stock, if we just get into any bit of risk on, I mean, any bit of risk on in this market, 
Now, a stock like Teladoc could fly to 100 plus in a, in a, in a day. Like, literally, like, you know, I don't want to say in a day, but in a week, okay? If you get a really strong week when all of a sudden the fund managers say, hey, you know what? I'm feeling a little better. Let's do a little bit of risk on this week. This baby flies to 100, a snap of fingers, a short squeezes, and just the, the amount of, uh, of momentum that would all of a sudden flood into a stock like that in a, in a matter of a week would be epic, okay? So, Teladoc, I, I really like that one, but gosh, when you're talking about profitability years from now, you know, there's no, there's no telling if this one could fall back down to 50 something dollars, which is remember what was Teladoc prior to Roni Rona? It was 50 something dollars to share. Now this company is so much more relevant. There's so much more built out. There's in such a better place, but at the end of the day, you know, when it comes to Teladoc, uh, it's an unprofitable company that loses money. Like it's nobody's business. And they're probably going to keep that up for at least a few years. Okay. Now, Let's talk about the number two and number one positions. Let's talk about Zoom and let's talk about good old Tesla Maesla. I want to give a big thank you to Moomoo Moo for sponsoring today's video. If you have not downloaded the Moomoo Moo app yet on your phone or your tablet, I would definitely do so. It is one of the coolest, most in-depth apps I've ever seen. And you can actually place trades right through the app as well here. They get a 4.7 out of 5 stars so far on the Apple App Store. So very, very impressive. One of the coolest features for me personally so far using the app has been the calendar feature, which will essentially show you economic data that's upcoming, earnings that are upcoming, IPOs, dividend stock splits, things like that. That is the type of data that a lot of us as stock market investors, we like to know, like what are the upcoming earnings or like what's the upcoming economic data that's going to be coming out that's going to affect the market, upcoming IPOs, dividend stock splits, things like that. Okay. They also have free level two trading data right inside their app. I'll say this is arguably the most in-depth app I've ever come across in the stock market since I've been doing this over the last 12, 13 years now. And right now they have a deal where you get five free stocks valued up to $3,500 each. Okay. Five free stocks valued up to $3,500 each. All you got to do is check out the link in the description down there, set up an account. Really cool deal. Check it out. It's the first link in the description. Alrighty guys, next up here is Zoom stock, ZM. So this one also hit a new 52 week low, 134. Four on Friday as well. Keep in mind, this stock has a high of $451. P.E. ratio on this one, not that dang high, 38. I will say, Zoom's P.E. in the past and price to sales ratio and those sorts of things looked insane. And I got to say, it's come down so much that it's, it's not a bad stock. The issue I have with Zoom, okay, there's kind of two main issues, right? One is, uh, you know, going back to work in the office is obviously going to return in a, in a huge way as this year goes out. In my personal opinion, we're going to see Rona cases skyrocket down over the next two months. Uh, masks are going to go away and all those sorts of things in the springtime, into the late springtime. Uh, office work is going to come back. And so that's kind of a headwind for Zoom. Also, the other thing I'll say about Zoom is I think this is going to be a really competitive space. Obviously, Microsoft has a product that competes with Zoom, but I think um, it, it's going to be a more competitive space over time and that might make zoom's life a little hard when you got those two headwinds kind of coming after it like i look at zoom and i'm like man is this product really that special that no one's going to be able to duplicate this or isn't already duplicating this so that's kind of the tough thing for me with zoom but i will say it's not a super high pe name it's obviously much above where the market's at in general but it's not like oh my gosh like it's at a you know a 600 pe or something like that 38 nothing crazy. They should grow in 22. They should grow in 23. And so I will say this one is probably pretty darn close to a bottom, a short-term bottom. Um, if not, it already hit it. Okay. So that one is pretty good there. Now, good old Tesla, my Tesla. So Tesla had unbelievable earnings. I mean, ridiculous. Like it doesn't get better than that. Elon Musk had a lot of great stuff to say on the conference call. Like I couldn't imagine that earnings have been any better in the conference call as well. Like it couldn't have been any better. Okay. But as somebody that also owns Tesla stock, right? I own, oh man, oh, oh man, I started, I started choking. I think Elon Musk was trying to choke me so I wouldn't say anything uh, negative about Tesla stock. But, you know, as somebody that has, you know, many hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in this stock, I got to talk about the, the risk with the stock, right? There, there's two core risks with Tesla. The first one, everybody knows that. It's the PE ratio, right? It trades at very high PE ratios, 276 PE ratio. If you look at the forward PE ratio, we're probably at, uh, you know, it depends on where, where earnings shake out. I would say we're anywhere between an 80 forward PE on this company right now, or at worst, maybe 120 forward PE. And that's if it's much less profitable than I expect, okay? So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that's that's high, right? I think everybody knows that. And price to sales ratio, all those things, like, obviously, Tesla trades high. But 
I think there's one other risk with this stock, and the fact is the automobile business, the car business, has been pretty darn strong recently. As we've seen, even used car prices have gone insane. And the automobile business is, at the end of the day, a cyclical business, right? And so if all of a sudden, uh, you know, uh, we go through any sort of recession, which Elon Musk himself has talked about a potential of a recession that he thinks, he thinks there's going to be a recession in the spring or summertime of this year at, or at the latest in 23. That's what Elon Musk says now. You know, we could all debate if that's going to happen or not, and time just has to tell, right? But I will say, if there's a recession, Tesla's not going to hit the growth rates that they're expected to hit, just flat out. You know, you can hit those sort of growth rates when everything's going great and people are buying, you know, cars left and right and, and there's cheap financing and interest rates are super low and, and everybody's feeling good. But as soon as that goes away, you're going to have some quarters that end up starting to miss numbers, which could end up missing a yearly numbers, which could end up missing the next yearly numbers, which, you know, all these things kind of compound on themselves. And so then you have to start, you know, uh, bringing back projections for even several years out, right? And so when I look at Tesla, my I think those are two main risks, valuation and the potential of a recession in which, you know, the automobile business just goes like this for a time period. The good news is even, I think even in a recession, Tesla would likely still grow their business. So that's the good news. The bad news is I, I doubt they're growing 50% plus in a, in a recession scenario. If they, are, if they do, they're the sickest company in the history of mankind. That's all I'll say about that because, uh, you know, that's a, that's a hard one for me to see. So when I look at Tesla, I look at a stock that, I don't. I think the folks that understand Tesla and what they're going after, I think most of us kind of understand. Like, it's not nearly as expensive as people that aren't really educated on the stock make it out to be, right? I think if you're un, a little uneducated when it comes to Tesla stock, you look at this one and it's like an 80 or 100 Ford P or whatever, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Ford trades at this and GM trades at this. But when you really understand what Tesla has for growth rates and what Tesla's doing and what their underlying business model is going to over the next five, 10 years, you start to realize, oh, this isn't that, that expensive. But just because it's not that expensive doesn't mean we can't go back to the $500, $600 range. If all of a sudden you get some recession fears and you continue in this risk-off market, this baby could easily go back down to five, dollars $600. So I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility at all. But man, I got to say, if this one did ever fall back down there, I, I mean, with how impressed I've been with the numbers, I would be actually tempted to, believe it or not, believe it or not, actually start buying Tesla again, you know, if this was to actually fall to those, those sorts of ranges. And that's saying a lot because I have not been a, you know, a buyer of the stock in, in obviously quite a while. So I've just been a holder, if anything, or a seller. So yeah, but I got to say they've done nothing but impress me quarter after quarter after quarter and just, you know, blow my mind essentially. Okay. But with that being said, the if we just continue on this risk off market, the NASDAQ continues to sell down. Yeah, this baby's going back to five, 600, okay? Now, so that covers the five biggest positions there, but what about these ones, okay? Well, what I did for six through 20 is I essentially put UN, which if you don't know what UN means, that means unprofitable. And then I put HPE for high PE, and then I put GD for good, meaning it's looking healthy, okay? Exec Sciences Corporation, unprofitable. U Unity Software, unprofitable. Spotify, unprofitable. Teletherapeutics, unprofitable. Uh, UiPath, unprofitable. Twilio, unprofitable. Block, which is Square, high PE. Uh, Beam Therapeutics, unprofitable. CRISPR Therapeutics is a good one, okay? Uh, Shopify, high PE. Palantir, high PE. DraftKings, unprofitable. Twitter, unprofitable. PagerDuty, uh, unprofitable. And Fate Therapeutics, unprofitable. So that's, that's where you get into the scary stuff. You know, the, the top five for Kathy Wood in the ARC Fund, you know, it doesn't look that crazy and it doesn't look that scary to be quite honest. It, you know, it's like, well, yeah, those ones could go down a little more, maybe 10, 20% more, but nothing crazy. But when you start going through, when you dig deeper, that's when it really starts getting scary and you go through six through 20 because all you see is you see one with a healthy valuation, it's CRISPR, and everything else is either a high P name or unprofitable. And many of these businesses, keep in mind, they're not going to be profitable in 22 either. Like I would say most of these, most of these companies, you know, you if you even want to think about profitability, you have to push out to 23, 24, maybe 25. And so that's the, that's the other risk for Kathy Wood and the ARC Fund is, man, if this market continues to sell down, you're in this situation where, you know, if we're in risk off, no one no one's out there. The hedge funds, the other funds in general, they're not out there to buy those sorts of stocks. Once things flip to risk on, 
man, these babies are going to move. A lot of these babies are going to move, and they're going to move big time. But we're not in that market right now, and we don't know when we're going to get back to that market, right? That's, I think, the... Um, the big question is like, do we get back to that market next week or next month or three months from now or six months from now or at the end of this year? There's a lot of people projecting we go back to risk on in March and April. Like, I, you know, I've I listed people on CNBC. I have friends that are, you know, super in the technical data and and trying to time the market and things like that. And from most of them, from what I hear, they're, they're they want to either get back in in uh, March and April or they're looking at summertime. I've had, you know, a couple of people that are like, oh, I'm going to wait till after this year. But most people I've heard have all said, hey, shaky first half of the year, get in in March and April, and then, you know, uh, ride the wave, essentially. But, you know, that remains to be seen. I'm not going to try to predict what's going to happen short term, because that's just, you know, that's like an impossible game to play, essentially. You know me, if I see deals, I buy deals, that's, and that's, I call it a day, okay? So the question is, is, is this a possibility? I would put it at about 50-50 to see this sort of you know, move back down. Maybe we get a little risk on market. Things things move a little bit, right? And then I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for things to fall back down because you don't have the uh, the profitability with those companies to say, oh, this is crazy. It's trading at blah, 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 PE or something like that. The only company that really trades at a low PE for the most part that Kathy Wood holds in that top 20 was Coinbase. But the risk, the, the thing with Coinbase always is, is, well, it's so Bitcoin dependent and crypto dependent. If, you know, as long as crypto is high, great. And as soon as crypto starts falling and, and people leave the market, you know, Coinbase is not in obviously a strong position at all in, in a market like that, right? So, I would call it about a 50-50. I think a lot of the risk has been removed from the Kathy, from the ARK Invest ETF. You know, if, if, I'm, if you had to put me on the spot, you say, is this ETF much higher or much lower in uh, five years from now than today? I would say it's much higher in five years from now than today. If you were to put me on the spot and say, by the end of this year, are we higher or lower? I, I, that's a coin flip to me, man. That's a complete coin flip to me. But as far as a lot of those companies go, they got great futures. But they're just really early stages in terms of trying to get to profitability and the market hates that in this sort of market and that's why you see Kathy Wood getting torn up and you see you know somebody like Warren Buffett on the other hand much more of a obviously a value investor I think we all know that you see Berkshire just kind of it's like the tortoise and the hare thing right where Kathy Wood was running her returns have been insane and then you look at Berkshire I should have overlapped a Berkshire Hathaway stock on this as well and you see Berkshire just you know, doing its thing. And, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what you get. You get, if you're going to take a more of a risk and you're going to go more growth stocks, you're going to, you're going to go, you're going to have some fun and then you're going to have some devastation. <laughs> so you're going to get a little bit of them both. Okay. Much love as always, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to check out the pinned comment down there to sign up for Moomoo. Get your five free stocks valued up to $3,500 each. Thank you for Moomoo for sponsoring today's video. Much love. Have a great day.